All right, welcome again, people, to Military Guna TV. Thank you very much for joining me. And today we have another Jamaican rigor boy on the channel, John Luca Levy. And that's a very good name. First thing first, that's a very, very good name. Uh, um, he, has, he had a little, a little glitch to it, a little nine minutes, nine minutes ago. They call it now. A little spontaneous sound, John Luca Levy. Can you imagine if I was a commentator calling that name? You're scoring a goal. Luca Levy! <laughs> Something like that. Luca himself. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show and appreciate the support. All right. So I know that you're a person who loves your football. And what age you started playing football? What age? Um, probably like six. I uh, started playing at, like with other players, enough to call it a team. I was like mm -hmm. six. Okay. Before that, I would just kick around the ball with my father, mm -hmm. but I, I was into like riding bicycle at that time too. Okay. So, but when okay. I was when I was like seven, eight, now that's when I was focusing football only. That was the only sport I wanted to do. Okay. So, so is football a family family sport? Or just you're the only one who step up? Yeah, yeah. My father and like a lot of my cousins. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everybody here plays football, so it's not like it's different in my family. But we all play football. All right, so you're an highlight. So it's easy for people see, see you on the field and say, "Who's that guy?" Because a lot of people don't watch it Premier League. A lot of people don't watch Earth Premier League. So, what is your family background like, and how you come come about to play for the for the for the regular boys, for even for the U team? Well, because I was born here and only lived here, like until I went away to play football, I only lived here. So, um, my parents are also from here. So, I guess if you if you went further back, like I think one of my grandparents and maybe some of my great grandparents came from England or something like that. But my family has been here for a while now. Okay. So, um. Your route to the national team, how was that? How was that for you? And what was the transition from playing normal football to the, to the national team? Um, I guess the, the closest thing before was like um, the parish league. So like I was, I was always playing for a real mono. So from under 13, I'd play for St. Andrew. Then under 15, St. Andrew again. So I played Parish League, and then the first I got my first national team card when I moved to Spain. So I guess okay. that helped because I was playing in Spain. They felt like they should um, give me a chance on the national team. So that was under seventeen. Okay. Okay, national under seventeen team. So that move that you made to Spain specifically was about football. Tell the viewers what that move was actually about. Um, that was with the Valencia Next Generation camps that they used to have here in Jamaica. And they would select players to go over there. So like first Martin Davis went and then I went the year after him. So okay. we were both living over there and just like learning about the language and experiencing the culture and everything. And at that time, Spain were the kings of football. That was like right after that. Barcelona's couple of trebles and when they won the World Cup and Euros and everything. So, okay, okay, yeah, that, that's a good while ago, like 2014, 2014, 2014, right? Around that time, yeah, it was about that. I was there from 14 to like almost 17. Oh, so you got you got a good feel of the the European style of football. What is the difference yeah, yeah. between the, youth, the European the youth style? system? Huh? I got a good view, I got a good view of the youth system. Okay. How do you and set up how, the youth system set up? Yeah, like I got a good understanding of that, and it's definitely best in Spain, and maybe like Netherlands and Germany have it very organized too. But okay. So as I when, say, when, at that time, at that time, even even the youth in Spain, it just mm -hmm. they were on a high because oh. the country was just so confident. Yeah. That's good. That's nice. Um, when I watch you play, you have a, you're a very technical player. So it, it really shows now where that technical ability would definitely come from. 
um, the, 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 the difference with the European football that you went there and learned? What is, it that, what is the difference between what you were playing in the RSPL uh, up to this day? The RS, it's hard to compare the RSPL with um, what I was playing in Spain. Because in Spain, I was under 15. So RSPL is a like, full adult league. So it's hard to compare. I could compare it with, with under 15 in Jamaica. Okay. But not the RSPL. All right. So do that comparison. Uh, let's give us a good idea. Like, it's the youths are just given so much more um so much more time on the field so they're playing even even if you're not really a top player at that age because for under 15 alone they have like eight divisions in that region so every every boy their parents will take them to a club and so you always have a chance to move up and go to a, a better club the next year and the league is is exactly like the the senior league all the way down to under eight the youths are playing uh, like at least at least one match a week right through the year. Maybe yeah. they get a little break. Whereas on a 15 in Jamaica would just be like a two or three month thing. Okay. And then the youths okay. go back to their like, different schools and maybe play Pepsi or whatever. Yeah. But in, in Spain, there's no um, school football. Everybody plays for a club. With that amount of football, you must get a level of technical ability. So um, there's a lot to see into that. Um, a one year ago, I saw an interview with you one year ago, and you said that you pray you, your dream is to play for the national team, the first night, the first the senior team, the senior national team, and represent Jamaica in the World Cup as well. And one year later now, which is up to date, you have represented Jamaica in the national senior team. How is that feeling for you? And what was the feeling when you got the first call? Um, like anytime I get a good chance or I like get a good support, it's it's a great feeling. But I think the key as a footballer, you have to like stay very stable. So like if you get left out of a side, you can't really get down on yourself. And then if you get called in the next time, you can't get like let it get to your head. Yeah. So I just want to always like no matter where I'm playing, I just want to always try to play my best, and that's that's all I can control. Yeah, okay. And just help help my teammates, you know? Yeah. Um a, a person that I liked, I, I really I would really love to know because this is off season for most of the Jamaican footballers. How do you guys keep yourself fit um and uh, match ready for like when you guys get a call up for to represent the national team? Well it's it's definitely hard and I think it's it's wrong that they haven't started the league here. I think that the government by not approving it they're showing that they don't really care about football and like the local development and so i think it's it's hard but i, I know me personally like i just run run hills a lot i go out to the sands at bull bay and i do a lot of running and i play like five aside on different turf fields just to keep my touches and just keep playing and enjoying the game and so yeah but even no matter how much like personal running you do and thing it's different to match fitness yeah exactly so yeah. so that that will always be hard but we have to just do our best and stay ready all right um so you got your your senior appearance um for the first team um on that day you no know, a lot of people are seeing you a lot of people have heard the name now against usa um when you got your time to shine, how did it feel for you going out on that pitch with the jersey on your back? Um, it felt very good. Like I, I didn't feel overly nervous, but it felt like a big moment. Felt felt very excited, and I just kind of went out there just to work as hard as I could, because it was like we're main we're mainly trying to to get possession of the ball. But yeah, you guys, you guys. Regardless of how the match went, like it still mm -hmm. felt great just playing for Jamaica and and an official match for the first time. It felt great for me personally. Yeah, based off what I've seen, your technical ability, the ability you love to pass the ball. 
um, I see you have a trademark of like you use inside of your foot, like you, you jab the ball. Um, like I'm not sure it's like a it's like, like jab chip with an inside of your instep. Yeah, yeah, is, I know. What it is. Is, is that a is that your trademark? I don't, I don't know if it's my trademark. I don't really do it consciously. Just that's just how I pass the ball. I'm, I'm going to tell that, definitely look, look as if it's their trademark. But you love using your right foot still. <laughs> I think maybe yeah. they're going to start to do some work on your left foot. But I love yeah, I like I like to use the outside of my right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that um, yeah, you have the right technical ability. That's the first thing I see. What the moment you touch on the pitch, then I started to watch a few of your videos, and I realized that that is one of your biggest as, um assets here: technical ability, your touch, your, your pass, clean, very very clean. Um, is it the case that the, the time you spent in Spain could have contributed to that aspect of your football? The time I spent in Spain, like it made me learn, it made me pay more attention to like the mental things that that give you better technical ability. Okay. Like knowing which foot to use when you're controlling the ball based on which side it's coming from and how it's keeping your hips open and stuff like that. Okay. Like the players the players in midfield that have the best technical abilities because they they're the smartest, so they're always checking their shoulder and they're, just, they're always calm, so they can control the ball good. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say it was just Spain, because even when I was at Real Moon, I, I got some good development there. And I was with some other top players at that age, and we're always playing one-twos and always playing little grids in training and things. So Real Moon is a good club for youth. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. That's that's really really nice. So, um, a question that I love to ask: Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Well, I don't really, I don't usually compare those two players. Messi, Messi is better, but it's not <laughs> like I'm saying anything bad about Ronaldo. I just think Messi is, is different. Yeah, all right. I see you wearing the jersey. Yeah, I'm not really a Barca fan. I just like them. I can't have other jerseys. Okay. See, when I was young, I used to support Man U, but recently I don't really have like one team I support. I just watch and learn from different games. Okay. I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan. Yeah. But I'm a big fan of Lionel Messi. <laughs> I'm glad that you're wearing the Barcelona jersey, so <laughs> it represents <laughs> what, what I think. Um, yeah. When I did the interview with Jay, you know, he told me Ronaldo. <laughs> no. <laughs> but at least I have a Messi now. But yeah. Um, Luca, thank you very much for coming on. Um, the, the people they have known a lot of people now can get a better idea of who you are and what you're about. I appreciate the fact that you, you took the time out of your day just to um speak with me. Um, thank you very much. Do you have anything to say to the regular boy fans? Because a lot of them will be watching. Can you say something to them? Give them some positive hope for the, the World Cup coming up to the fans, the regular boy fans. A lot of regular boy fans watch this channel. Well, to the fans, I just want to say thanks for support and always encourage people to like not judge too quickly and just understand that players like are like everybody else and they're just trying to enjoy the game. So just be supportive and try to help the team in any way you can. All right, thank you, Lula Buddha. So, so viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. A lot of respect. We have John Luca Levy with us today, and I'll be seeing you guys again soon. Thank you, Mr. Um, Levy, for coming on. And I do appreciate the fact that you take time out every day and be here with us today. So thank you very much. And this has been Military Buna TV. And guess what? We are all people. Ah, respect.